welcome Circleville friends and family. We're coming together for a time of uh, praise and petition. This is our Wednesday night prayer service. I'm learning. I'm learning. Where's the mute? (laughs) There it is. All right. I will learn how to do this, I promise. Well, we are here to gather together as a community. Now, just like I am learning this, you may be learning this too. And so if you find some struggles where maybe it was hard to get onto the computer and you're watching this at a later date, or perhaps um, you are trying to type in a comment and and join, then please call the church office during the week. uh, Ask for some instructions. And uh, Beth will gladly walk you through the best she can uh, in in ways of of communicating with one another and connecting yourself. We are going to have a wonderful night tonight where we spend some time in song, in some prayer, um, sharing with one another. Uh, My understanding is that you're able to uh, connect with me right now live by, by typing into the computer. And so if you have prayer concerns... Uh, and then you would like me to pray for them, then just simply put in the prayer concern. If you would like to type a prayer and would like me to read that so others can hear it, then that would be wonderful too. And I would be able to say something like, um, Jean Braunius just typed you know, this prayer, and then I would read her prayer for, for all of us to participate. We're going to start this evening by reading the 23rd Psalm. You know, perhaps probably the most famous passage in the Bible besides John 3.16. Whether people know Jesus or not, when you start saying the 23rd Psalm, ears perk up, it's familiar. And it is our hope, it is our prayer, that by having our worship services on Sunday uh, through uh, Facebook, it is our prayer that having these prayer services, that there'll be a sense of the familiar, that we are still not separate because we are one body in Christ. And even those who do not know Christ, this is a familiar passage that often gives them comfort in times of difficulty. When I go to the hospitals and I visit somebody who knows Christ, this is one of the favorite passages. But even somebody who doesn't know Christ, this is one of their favorite passages. So please, uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there as well to the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's just pray for a moment to open up this time of praise and petition this Wednesday night prayer service, piercing the darkness. Father in heaven, we come before you right now, and we know that you are by our side 24-7. You never leave us, but sometimes we have to have our eyes opened, our hearts opened. We have to have our minds reminded that you are with us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the promises that you have here. And Lord, as we have this time of of praise and petition, as we have this prayer service that is live on, on Facebook, we just ask, dear Lord, that you would bind our hearts together and remind us that we are not alone. That one, we are the body of Christ, still connected by the Holy Spirit. And two, that wherever we find ourselves right now, you are in our midst. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Again, as a reminder, you can access and text me right now uh, on Facebook. You're able to 
comment on being corrected. Comment me right now on Facebook. And so I look forward to your, your comments. I look forward to your prayer concerns. And again, if you would like to write a prayer, I'll gladly read that prayer so that we may be one together. A couple things about Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right now, think for just a moment, I know of at least two of the members of our congregation who are truly on the front, front lines. Uh, Edmund is, is working in the emergency room and, and my wife at the hospital. Uh, she sent me a picture today of all of her protective gear on and realizing that there is the valley of the shadow of death. Perhaps you feel that way when, when you go out shopping. Uh, that, Lord, I don't know what I can touch, what I can't touch. Well, just think about that. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Since this pandemic has started, we have been using the phrase faith and not fear, peace and not panic. Even though we find ourselves in that kind of valley, we can have a peace because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And I want to just draw your attention to the, the point in verse 5. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Do you realize what that passage is saying? Oil was something that was healing. It was basically our, our, our medicine for, for the cracked skin of, of, a, of a Bedouin who was a shepherd in, in the wilderness when that dry desert wind would hit them and their skin would dry out. They would pour oil, olive oil, or oil that was made from the, the fat of the lambs, the fat of the sheep. And when the Bible says, you anoint my head with oil, it means God pours out healing upon us. Now, in this sinful fallen world, I am not going to commit to you that God promises a rose garden, that if you get sick, just pray and you'll be healed. That's... That is not the good news of Christ. In this sinful fallen world, God promises, yes, He will never leave you nor forsake you. And that our full ultimate healing is in paradise with Him, in eternal relationship with Him. So just remember and take comfort in that. Beth and I are going to sing together, Open Our Eyes, Lord, to uh, just kick off our, our time of praise and petition. You spin our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we love Him. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Jesus, to reach out and touch Him and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen, to open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. And again, I encourage you to, to post some comments so that we can pray together. I'd like to read 1 Thess Thessalonians five sixteen through 19. And that's about prayer. 1 Thessalonians five sixteen through 19. Rejoice always, even in a pandemic. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. God, are you really serious about this? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. We can pour water on the fire of the Holy Spirit 
and quench him. Turn him down a notch or two. We can turn down the joy that Christ gives us. We can hold back from the reality that at every moment our God is with us. And our God says, don't do it. Don't give in to fear. Don't give in to panic. Hold on to faith. Hold on to peace. So hear that passage again. Rejoice always. Earlier today when the sun came out and I happened to be home after work and I just saw it going across the fields and hitting the horses. It was a beautiful day. There's a lot to be afraid of. There's a lot to to be upset about. There's a lot that could take our focus. But God wants us to rejoice always. To know that no matter what, He is our loving Father who's good and kind. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Way back years ago when I had a youth group down in Jersey, I remember telling the young people it was like having God on the brain. You, you, you just couldn't get away from it. In a, in a negative way, think today of the opioid epidemic or, or those who are, are so caught up in heroin, they just can't get away from it without a miraculous touch of the Holy Spirit. Well, having a relationship with God through Jesus Christ is supposed to be like that. That you just almost can't get away from the, the knowledge and the peace every moment of the day that your God is with you. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Don't quench the Spirit, my friends. Don't quench the Spirit. This evening as we come to prayer times, I'm going to encourage us to have kind of a two-fold approach. A praise and a petition. That each prayer that we pray and that each prayer that you pray at home is a praise and a petition. We're called to rejoice. We're called to know that we are the wondrous children of God, not because of our good, but because of how good our God is. And that's where we can rejoice. And so we're going to start each prayer acknowledging that truth. So it'll be a praise and then a petition where we petition our God, where, where we seek our God, perhaps on our own behalf, perhaps on the behalf of our children, Perhaps on the behalf of someone else. But prayer, praise and petition are the two sides of our, of our prayer meeting tonight. Kind of a, a quick public service announcement. I have a tenfold challenge that I've been putting forward on each service that we've been doing on the internet. A lot of the devotions have this tenfold challenge as well. While you're home right now, Take it as your purpose, God's calling for you as the church to choose five fellow believers, people from our church, who you will call regularly and encourage them. Perhaps the way you encourage is to not say a word and let them do all the talking. Be someone who listens. Perhaps it is doing all the talking because they can't put the words out. And you're going to pray for them. So you have five people who are fellow believers. Fellowship. The fellowship of the believers. But also five people who are not really churchgoers. Perhaps they really don't know God through Jesus Christ. And you call them. And you listen. And you cry. And, and you speak. And you look for the opportunities to share with them the peace that passes understanding. And so, as long as this wilderness experience continues, as long as this time of, of stay-at-home order takes place, my challenge is a tenfold challenge that you would be a minister of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our first prayer time tonight is going to be to pray for Bob Grauman. Bob is, happens to be one of our missionaries. And earlier today, he was texting me. 
he was asking how our church was doing, and especially since we have so many elderly people in our church. And I shared with him that we're doing certain things online and that we're calling people and we're even doing home deliveries. I was able to do one of those this afternoon and drop off some toilet paper and paper towels. Again, if you do not need to go out, stay at home. Those of us who have to be out for our jobs, we will with joy in our hearts drop off juice, bread, milk, eggs, toothpaste, toilet paper. We'll find it and we'll bring it to you. But I had a chance to do that today and what a blessing that was for me. But also I pray it was a blessing for that individual. And Bob was so excited to hear that this little itty bitty church, this country church, has mobilized and is doing so much. And then he says that, I'll read his text, we are doing fine. This is him and his wife, Pat, here in Wisconsin. The virus is really picking up here. Lots of people are sick. They're a little bit behind us here in New York, and they're seeing all the news broadcasts, and it's scary. But so far, we, Bob and Pat, are doing okay. Please continue to pray for us as we pray for you. So let's do that right now. Father in heaven, we pray for Bob and Pat Grauman as they continue to do all they can to be ministers of the gospel, missionaries of your good news. Lord, they have worked with students for so many years here and abroad. They've even worked in some places that can't be mentioned because if it is, they've gone places that do not want Christ and they've brought Christ. Lord, right now, put a hedge of protection around them. Watch over them. Keep them safe. Like many of us, they're starting to get a little older too. And Lord, I give you praise and glory that we at Circleville had the privilege and the opportunity to first support Bob as he went into the mission field some almost 40 years ago. And as we continue to support him, that he brings the good news of Christ. Lord, open doors for him, even during this time of stay-at-home orders, even during this time of, of, a, of a lockdown. Open doors for him to share his love of Jesus to those around him. May it be through phone calls or letters or emails or text. Lord, I thank you that his tenfold challenge is probably a hundredfold or a thousandfold. Give him strength as I know he serves you. This I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I see that Cheryl Wright has just uh, texted or put a, a post on, and I'll read that. Just want to say that I know God cannot lie. Amen. He said he will never fail or forsake us. Thank you, Lord, for I am your child. I have been washed in the precious blood of Jesus. Therefore, I believe that no weapon formed against me. You are my high tower, my hope of protection. Praise you, Lord. Now, if you don't know, Cheryl happens to be praying Scripture. And what a wondrous thing it is to, to get into God's Word in such a way that when we pray, we are almost praying back to God the very words that He's given to us. And praying Scripture is, is such a wonderful opportunity to, to just lift up our mighty Father in Heaven. And so for just a moment, let's do that. Let's just praise our God for a moment. So at your home, where you are right now, or wherever you find yourself, join with me as, as I pray a prayer of praise. But at the same time, realizing that you can do that. And if you talk while I'm talking, that's okay. Father in heaven, we give you glory, honor, and praise that you are with us every moment of the day. You never leave us nor forsake us, that you are our strength and our shield. Lord, we don't always understand the plans that you have for us. But we take the Jeremiah 29, 11 promise, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And Lord, we know that our true future, our true hope, is not to be citizens of this world, not to totally rely on doctors and medicine, for we will not live here forever. But someday, as your children, we will sit at the banquet table with your Son, and we will see you face to face, and we will acknowledge you at your throne, in your throne room, that you alone are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the mighty God of Israel. Because, Lord, you have saved us from our sins. And so we acknowledge that our future and our hope is to be citizens of heaven because we already are adopted children of the Most High God. To you be glory, honor, and praise now and forevermore. Amen. I see that Beth Russell has also uh, just posted, pray for the teachers and the students that will start distant learning, that they will have patience during a new way of learning. And here's a mom with three little ones at home. And if you know of some moms or dads who are trying to hold their families together and trying to encourage their learning, parents who never intended to be homeschool teachers, uh, right now we need to pray for the teachers, the students, but also the parents. And so we'll start with a praise and then go to that petition. Father in heaven, you are the teacher. Jesus, you were called Rabbi, Rabboni, teacher, and you teach us so much. We think of the story of the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness and how every day you taught them to rely on you. You taught them to, to say that they need their God. And so, Lord, as a teacher, you remind us to pray tonight for the teachers for those who right now are away from their students because of the, the, the danger of getting together in large groups. Churches and schools can no longer be together. But yet, those teachers have a calling in their heart for those little ones. And so, Lord, we pray tonight. We petition you, Lord, tonight that those teachers would find encouragement and strength and not discouragement that you would encourage their hearts as they do their best to, to reach out in a technological way, as they reach out in a distant way to those students who they care about, who have been placed under their charge, under their keeping, that these young minds would still learn and grow and feel cared about by their teachers. Lord, we pray for the students. Lord, some of them, this is not the best way to learn. Lord, for some of them, this is going to be a wonderful learning experience. But for others, they need that one-on-one. -on -one. They need that face-to-face. -face, and this is going to be a struggle. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them in a special way that these students who are, who are going to struggle will find, find that they can learn, that they, they can grow still, that they can mature. And Lord, we pray for those parents. We pray for those moms and those dads and perhaps grandmas and granddads who are doing their best to, to entertain and teach and guide and stop the craziness because the kids are just going stir crazy. Lord, encourage those moms and dads and, and adults. Let them know that we are praying for them, that you are in their midst and that you are holding their hand. Lord, I, I think of that footsteps painting and how the individual, the poem of footsteps, wonders why God left them when there's only one set of footsteps. And Jesus says, there were two steps, and when it really got hard, I carried you. So Lord, we ask right now that when it gets really hard and parents are really frustrated, that you carry them that you know that you, as the mighty God, can lift up those parents, those adults, and give them the strength to, to cope, the strength to still be mature, Christ 
image bearers for their children. Lord, we pray this in your powerful name. In Jesus' name, amen. Cheryl, Cheryl also wrote back that, yes, God's word will not come back void, and amen. The word void, by the way, means empty, and uh, we, we agree wholeheartedly. And then Cheryl continues to write, yes, Lord, thank you for your promise. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. Kim from our church is calling for prayer for the nurses especially her sister Mary, who is an RN at Orange Regional Medical Center. And so we're going to pray for, for nurses. We're going to pray for, for Edmund, who is also working at Orange Regional, uh, for my wife Heidi, who's working down at Columbia Presbyterian. Uh, early when I first started our prayer time together, I shared that Heidi today sent me for this first time a picture of her in her protective garb, and it made me a little bit nervous and a little scared, I'll be honest. And so we're going to pray right now for, for protection for those who are truly on the front, front, front lines, our doctors, our nurses, our, our hospital workers, our technicians. Even think about those who are delivering the food uh, in the hospitals, those who are cleaning the rooms, who, you know, there are just so many elements to that. And so those who are on truly the front lines. So let's pray again for that. And again, we're going to start first with a praise and then our petition because our God is worthy. Father in heaven, in Psalm 46, you are our fortress and our refuge, our, our protection. And so we acknowledge that you are the, the God who is the God of protection. We acknowledge that you are all loving and all-powerful, and all-knowing, none of this is taking you by surprise. And so, Lord, we simply cry out to you. Yes, Lord, we cry out to you on behalf of our, our doctors and our nurses. We think specifically of, of Mary, Lord, tonight, and we think specifically of Edmund, and we think specifically of Heidi. And, Lord, if, if more people come in, the names, we'll pray for them specifically, too, because Lord, you don't want us to just have general big prayers. You also want us to, to be specific, to give you all the, the little things, the specific things, the minute things that we care about in our hearts. Because, Lord, those are important to us. Lord, we think of Mary and Edmund and Heidi, the doctors and nurses at the nearby hospitals, Orange Regional Medical Center, those in New York City, for Columbia Presbyterian and in the other hospitals. Lord, be the fortress, the refuge for these individuals. Lord, as, as they need to, to do certain things that are less safe than they used to be because there's not enough equipment, not enough masks or face shields or, or gowns. Lord, protect them. We just praise you, God, that these individuals are willing to, to be on the front lines. These individuals are willing to, to be caregivers. And Lord, they're putting their lives at risk. May we be ever so grateful. It's been a common thing to, to say to a service man or woman, thank you for your service. Lord, may our hearts right now be filled with gratitude for individuals, many who know you as Lord and Savior, who are doing this because of their faith in you. But Lord, there's even non-believers who have this call upon their heart to care about their fellow human being. And Lord, we, we thank you for them. May during this time of, of, of tribulation, during this time of, of testing, may they see the hand of God before them. And may doctors and nurses who don't know you come to know a faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. May the mercy and love that they're showing be something that comes from your throne 
because you have showed us grace and mercy on the cross. You are you are the healing God. You are the God, our healer, Jehovah Nisi. Lord, we just thank you that you are this loving, healing God. And tonight, for our doctors and nurses, for Mary and for, for Edmund and for Heidi, send your angels to build a wall around them and to protect them. We pray this in the healing name, the name that causes Satan to flee, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to uh, continue. And I'd like to read for you Psalm 46. And I made reference to that a little bit earlier. And I'm not quite so quick sometimes when it comes to looking at numbers with my dyslexia. So bear with me here and there. Psalm 46 says this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not... Scripture, and I'm going to continue that right now. Um, and then we're going to have another time of prayer and praise, or praise and petition. Um, we'll be praying for Chris Sparks, uh, those who know Sue from church. Uh, and Chris has been a part of our church for many, many years. He now lives out towards Port Jervis, he was diagnosed with uh, COVID-19, and so he is uh, uh, about our age, and um, he's an individual who we'll pray for in a moment. So we're going to read Psalm 46 again. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, faith, not fear. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble in its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in her midst. She shall not be moved. God will help when morning dawns. The nations rage the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. In our last prayer time, we were praying for the nurses and the doctors and the hospital workers, specifically for Kim's sister, Mary, and for Edmund, who goes to our church as an elder, and Heidi, who's my wife, the nurses who are on the front lines. That God would be their fortress. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolation on the earth. He will make wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And again, Sue just texted, uh, commented in for us to pray for Chris Sparks. And so let's do that now together. And I encourage more of you to send in some uh, prayer requests. If you write a prayer, I'll, I'll read it for everybody. And if you send in a prayer request, I'll pray that. Father in heaven, you are a good and loving Father who knows us individually. And so, Lord, we give you glory because you don't just see a sea of people. You see each individual as your child when they accept you and know you through Jesus Christ. So, Lord, glory be your name because you are our Father in heaven. And so, we pray right now. We cry out to you right now on behalf of Chris Sparks. 
Lord, he, he's a wonderful, caring young man who cares about his mom so wonderfully. He works diligently and has worked diligently for so long at Walmart. And right now, he has been diagnosed. He is sick. We don't know how desperately ill he is. We don't know if his symptoms are just early on or if he'll be okay. So we cry out to you as, as the God who holds each of us in the palm of our hands to right now give comfort to Chris, give comfort to Sue, give comfort to, to Linda, his sister. Wrap your arms around them in a holy hug. Send your Holy Spirit to, to give a supernatural love moment to each of them right now. Let Chris know that he is not alone, that he is being prayed for, that he is cared for, that he is loved by a church community, but more than that, that he is loved by his Father in heaven. Father, we ask, we cry out, we petition you, we, we ask in, in earnest prayer that your will would be to heal Chris, to strengthen him, that his body would fight the virus. And Lord, we know that our prayers are always answered, but not always the way that we choose. So Lord, if our choosing of this prayer is not the direction that is yours, then give us the comfort, give us the strength, give us the faithfulness to accept your will. But right now, it is our cry. You ask for your people to humble themselves and to, to come before you and to cry out to you. And you show us in your word that when we do that, you hear us. And Lord, we know that we can break your heart for good and for bad. When we turn our back upon you, it breaks your heart. And when we cry out to you, you hear our cries. You told Moses that you heard the cries of your children when they were in Egypt. And you hear our cries on behalf of Chris Sparks right now. So Father in heaven, we cry out to you to heal him, to strengthen him. And that in this wilderness experience, he would be able to share the love of Jesus Christ with those who minister to him. That perhaps a doctor or a nurse or, or a hospital worker would find what's missing in their life because of Chris's faith. We know he is your child. He has claimed the blood of Jesus Christ upon himself. He is washed in the blood of the Lamb. And he is your child. So, Lord, we do not know why you've allowed this to befall him. But we look forward with anticipation to seeing glory be given to you, even in the midst of this struggle. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, Linda, by the way. I'm here seeing that Linda came upon And again, thank you for your patience for our technical difficulties. Norma is praising God for his word. The peace, the hope, the joy, the strength, the faith that is only from him. Prayers for all the essential workers working in grocery stores and other businesses. Their families for protection and all they need. We're going to pray that prayer in just a moment as well. Just something for food for thought. I was at work today on one of those grocery workers. And I shared with um, one of the district managers who came to see me that I am a little concerned about some things. And I do have plenty of time that I could take. And he said, well, because you've had cancer and got done with chemo not that long ago. And you have a 91-year-old mom at home. Why don't, why don't you stay home? And then I thought about everyone else. If everybody would do that, the power would go out. If every gas station person would stay home, how would the nurse and the doctor get to work? 
if every individual who worked in the power plants said, oh, I'm not going out, we would lose power. If every grocery store worker stayed home, there would be no milk, there would be no juice, there'd be no bread and eggs, there'd be no food to feed our families. And not like the nurses and the doctors and the hospital workers, we are nowhere frontline, frontline people like that in the thick of it, in the thick of battle. But we are still essential services. And so Norma is asking us to pray for those who work in the grocery stores. When you go, and if you need to, and again, our church is willing to do the shopping for you, if you can stay at home, please stay at home, call the church, and some of us who have to go out will bring you your food, will bring the, the milk and the juice and the, the toothpaste. But if you do happen to go out, perhaps think about the stress, the person at the counter who has been waiting on people for six or seven or eight hours is under and thank them for their service. Thank them for be willing to be on the front lines so that the power doesn't go out and the gas doesn't stop flowing and the, the food is still on the shelves. So let's pray for those essential service people right now. Father in heaven, we know that you are essential, that we cannot even take a breath into our lungs without you. You are the sustainer and provider of life. Father, to you be glory. We praise you. To you be honor. We lift up your name. We exalt you. And so, Lord, being the God that you are, we are reminded right now of all those who also are kind of essential right now. We think of our firemen. We think of our ambulance corps workers. We think of our police. Lord, without them, there would be chaos. Without them, there, there would be greater loss of life. So, Lord, thank you for their willingness to be on the front lines. We pray for specifically the, the Circleville Fire Department and the Bullville Fire Department. We, we think of the Middletown police officers and the New York State police officers. We pray specifically for the ambulance corps that, that takes care of this area and beyond. We think of those, Lord, who do other essential tasks. A plumber who will go to someone's house to fix the boiler so the house is not cold. The electrician who is keeping the lights on at someone's house. We think of the power workers who go to the power plants and make sure that the power is coming to us. We think of those who are working on the power lines. Lord, as I drive, I, I see those trimming the trees so that if there's a storm, we are not without power. We think of the gas stations and the food stores. Lord, these are people who are essential. Protect them. Encourage them. Help society right now, our community, to be grateful. We are all under so much stress. Sometimes we bring our stress with us and we can be a little short with one another. Forgive us, dear Lord. And as believers in Jesus Christ, as image bearers of Jesus Christ, may we be the frontline individuals to say thank you, to show gratitude, and perhaps to say, you will be in my prayers. Thank you so much for serving me today. May we use these opportunities as, as people of faith to share our faith. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sue Salma writes, Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the people who are helping each other through this difficult time. Peggy writes, Pray for me. I have been working in various shop rights, packing out groceries. I now have a sore throat, but no fever. Pray for healing. Peggy, we're going to pray for you right now. Mighty God, who hears everything, 
omniscient and omnipotent, who is all-powerful. We pray right now for Peggy as she is concerned. She's been one of those essential people at ShopRite. And Father in Heaven, right now she has a sore throat. During this time of the year, so many of us have a sore throat or, or an allergy or a stuffy nose, and it's going to make us nervous. We right now ask, Lord, that you would fill Peggy with hope and faith, that you would heal her sore throat so that she would know that she is safe. She has no fever, and we praise you for that. At the moment, she is she's feeling pretty good, but she's concerned. Lord, strengthen her. Give her courage. Give her fortitude. Let her know that you are with her. Lord, we pray for Peggy right now that you would be so real to her that she would know, even if she's sitting in a room by herself, that she's not by herself, that her faithful God is with her. Lord, let her know that not just right now this one-shot deal she'll be prayed for. Let her know that Circleville Church is going to keep a list of these prayer concerns and daily these individuals will be prayed for by name, lifted and placed on the throne, the altar before the throne of our God. Because God, you want us to be a people who humbly come before you and bring our requests, our praises, and our petitions before the mighty God of Israel. Lord, we lift Peggy before you now. Hold her close to you and heal her throat. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Another psalm that talks about God being our refuge and our fortress is Psalm 91. I know this has been on the internet quite a bit as, as the Psalm 91 promise. And I want to caution my brothers and sisters in Christ who, who are watching right now. I want to caution us as, as Circleville Church not to get sucked into the health, wealth, prosperity gospel. What that gospel teaches, what that flavor of Christianity teaches, is if you cry out to God enough, everything will be okay. If you're good enough as a Christian, everything will be okay. You'll be healed. Now, God does heal in miraculous ways. My uncle was told that he, at best, had three years to live because of a heart problem. He was called by the doctors, the man with the noisy heart, because he had a plastic valve. He was one of the first people to ever receive one. The first individual who lived through the operation, lived for three days. The next individual lived for three weeks. And they felt that they understood it well enough now that they could tell my uncle that if he makes it, he could live for three years. Well, he lived for 28 years after that. I do believe that our God steps into this fallen world and miraculously does things. He does heal people. But... We do not have God on a leash. He is not our dog that if we pull hard enough, pray hard enough, we will get him to jump through the hoop for us. The prosperity gospel is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are times that God does not take away the pain of this world because he has a bigger plan that you or I may not understand. So when I read Psalm 91, and we come to what is called the, the Psalm 91 promise, where it talks about being safe from disease and healed, realize that God speaks to us through his word, and that there are passages that were for a specific person, for a specific time, and perhaps this is your time, that God will do the 90, Psalm 91 promise. But if not, know this, 
that your God is still with you and he does not forsake you. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. By the way, a fowler was somebody who caught birds to eat. And it was a, a snare is something that the bird would fly into and get caught. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions. Pinions are feathers, by the way. And that is a picture, this sounds kind of funny, of God like a big chicken. And that's not making fun of God. Think about a chicken with chicks and holding out her feathers and the chicks run underneath for warmth, for protection. It's a, it's a picture of God holding out his, his presence and his children being underneath him, having warmth and protection. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right side, but it will come, not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. That's the quote, by the way, that Jesus heard from Satan, who tempted Jesus to throw himself off. And Jesus was hearing from Satan's lips, Oh, God will protect you. And you know, the angels will, will, will stop you from falling. Your foot won't even hit the ground. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. For you will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent, and will trample, you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. When he calls me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a, what a psalm of encouragement. What a psalm of promise. But know this, that sickness or not, your salvation, your eternal salvation has been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. And you will have a God who is your fortress and your strength that not even Satan himself can take that away from you. God might allow Satan to throw fiery darts. And perhaps the economic meltdown is going to strongly affect some of us. Perhaps foreclosures are in our future. Perhaps sickness is in our future. But our eternal future is in the hands of a loving father. And someday, as princes and princesses, heirs of the kingdom, co-heirs with Christ, we will reign with him because he has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. We're going to continue uh, praying for New York City right now. New York City is in the thick of it. Um, at the moment, they have not reached full capacity. I was listening to Governor Cuomo a few hours ago, but they have 
rallied the hospitals to, to try to move patients around, and if the hospitals reach capacity, which they believe they will, then upstate hospitals are going to start taking in uh, individuals. Orange Regional, if it's full, well then they'll start sending them up to Albany and step by step further out. Uh, one thing that was kind of encouraging to hear Governor Cuomo say is we are in this together. Scripture says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Well, this tragedy, this, this time of wilderness is falling upon the just and the unjust. But as a community, we are in this together. And now is the time that the light of Jesus Christ should shine ever so more boldly to our communities. So let's pray for New York City right now. Father in heaven, we pray for New York City, New York State. We pray for its leaders. We think of Governor Cuomo and, and Mayor de Blasio, the, the state senators and uh, those who, who work in making policies. We think of the, the, those who are in New York City who are in leadership. And we realize, Lord, that there is a great weight upon their shoulders. Lord, help them to know you so that weight might be lifted. Help them to know you so that that weight might be a little bit lighter. You say to us that we should cast our yoke upon you. That our burdens should go upon you. Lord, we ask right now that Governor Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio and, and all those who are elected officials would start turning their hearts and minds to you. That they would cast their burdens to you. That they would be wise and use discernment that your Holy Spirit gives them to make good and right decisions. Perhaps, Lord, they'll learn to make decisions that are far better than they've made in the past. Lord, we grieve for some of the decisions that our elected officials have made. Things that, as Christians, break our hearts. Lord, we think of the value of life right now and how important people are. People who are dying in the hospitals and, and we are doing everything we can to save them. May we allow that to pour over and to realize that every life is important even the life of the unborn, even the life of those who have not had yet a chance to take a breath. May we, Lord, seek forgiveness that as a society, on one hand we try to save life and on the other hand we take it. Lord, we pray for New York City that it would be a place where healing comes, that the peak of this disaster would, would come quickly and, and people would be saved. Lord, we also pray for, again, all those who are essential, those who are picking up sick people, Lord, even those who are taking care of the bodies. Protect them. Help them. Lord, we cry out to you. We, we beseech you. We, 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 we earnestly have our hearts opened in, in tearful concern for our fellow brothers and sisters in humanity, and may we, as believers in Jesus Christ, be a light unto a dark world right now. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For just a moment, I'd like to share what a strange thing during a prayer and praise service, a pet peeve. You see, Right now, during this lockdown, right now, during this time of social distancing, there are things that don't make sense. And forgive me, the world will always be a place of confusion because it is sinful and fallen and under the reign of Satan. I want you to think for just a moment about essential services. It's so sad in a sense that a marijuana dispensary is considered an essential service, that a liquor store is considered an essential service, that right now, and I could say this from personal experience, 
that because lottery is still up and running, there are people who go out for no other reason to my stores and others than to play the lottery, putting their lives at risk and mine. And apparently that's essential. And the churches need to be closed because, well, getting together is not essential. And I agree, don't misunderstand, I agree that we are doing all we can as believers in Christ to, to lead in this um, effort to hold people safe. That's why our church is committed that if you don't need to go out, please stay at home. Send us a shopping list and we will bring what you need to your doorstep. We'll wave at you through the window and pray with you over the phone. But this whole idea of essential, what is essential to you? What's essential to our culture? Well, apparently in our culture, there are things that are still essential that should almost make us laugh and cry at the same time. What is essential? To give people hope. To give people Jesus Christ. And so my tenfold challenge that I am going to continue bringing before you as a church community is to have five people who are believers in Christ that you regularly call to care about, to listen to them and to, to talk with them, to, to pray with them, to have fellowship with them, and five individuals who are not really churchgoers, who may not know, know really know Jesus Christ, and to listen with them and to, to share with them and to look for the opportunity to share your faith and to pray with them. This is a tenfold challenge that you would be a minister of the good news of Jesus Christ to the community that you find yourself in. And in this technological age, perhaps the person you're calling is in Florida. Perhaps the person you're calling is in Wisconsin. That's okay. A tenfold challenge that you would be a light in the darkness, the voice, the hands, and feet of Christ now at this time. It's 8 o'clock. And we're going to close with singing a song. I'm going to encourage that you continue to tune into Facebook, that you continue to, to look at our morning devotions, that you continue to uh, check out our worship services. Um, there's even going to be a, a, a kids club corner, a children's corner, that we have a, a devotion that will be up tomorrow already. And we're hoping to do one of those each day. So, if you know people who might need some encouragement, call them, share this with them, that perhaps they also can connect with our Facebook page and find some encouragement. Our closing song is going to be hymn number 630, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Now, I've shared before, and I'll say it again, if you would like a hymn book at home, let me know. One of the elders, one of the deacons will bring that to your doorstep so that if this is a prolonged time that we cannot be together, that you can worship with us and have the words right in front of you. Please be encouraged. We have thoughts about how to make Palm Sunday special. We have thoughts on how to make Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and Resurrection Sunday special. So please stay tuned and connect with our Facebook page so that you'll get those updates. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we tried? 
trials and temptations. Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield. Thou wilt find a soul instead. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Peace, my friends, not panic. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. My friends, without a relationship to God through Jesus Christ, we are lost. Until next time, know that you are blessed. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Know that you are God's workmanship and in the hands of your sovereign Father in heaven. Until next time, be blessed and be safe. Amen.